I'm Ernie Conover. And this uh, issue, I thought we would uh, turn a little spindle turning project, a carver's mallet. This is an easy spindle turning project, and it can be turned from green wood, and it can be turned from any size to a little, little Lilliputian mallet like this for a child or a lady, or for fine carving, uh, to a fairly large, hefty size like this that's great for timber framing or really driving a chisel. The important thing is that you get a piece of wood that doesn't have a complete annular ring in the piece. This is all to one side of the center of the tree. Now, once we turn it, it will uh, warp oval slightly, but that won't affect its performance in any way. The only thing we sort of have to do is put a little finish on each end to kind of help it from checking down there. Now is uh, the time to start shaping our mallet. I also put a very heavy chamfer on this end. It's faced off fairly square over here, and there's a heavy chamfer so that when we strike things, the, the wood won't chip and tear on that edge. The head size wants to be about like that, and the rest of this will be a handle that fits our hand. And we can just start getting a lot of the wood out of here with a roughing out gouge. Notice how I'm angling this, setting it down on the bevel, and pushing down like that. All right, now we're going to have to start working some of this out of here with a spindle gouge. And we'll just set that down here like this. And start getting rid of some wood. And now, in the head part of it here, we want to put some back taper in it. As you can see that that is tapered here. And that's because when you hit with it, that makes this surface pretty much square to how you drive it with your wrist. So, we will, without further ado, we'll just put a little bit of taper in there like that. Just about right. Now we can leave it, one th with a roughing out gouge like this that's really sharp, you can just take and put it at a little bit of an angle and run it along like that and get a beautiful finish that's about as good as you could get with a skew. But if you want to live a little bit dangerously, you're going to take a skew just like this. You're going to start right on the heel right there, cut in just a little bit like that. Just take a nice peeling cut right down through there. Turn this down a bit more. Time to start checking. The idea is to get a nice handle that isn't going to give you a monkey fist. It's going to be comfortable, comfortable to hold. Uh, we want a nice cove here with a bead on the end so that it won't fly out of our hands if we're really swinging with it. And we want a swell in the middle that's going to fit right into our palm. Feeling good? About right for my hand. So, again, I'm going to come back in here. Take a little bit more wood out of there like that. And I'm going to do a strong half cove right here. That's going to give my hand some purchase there. about right. If you want to really eliminate the use of sandpaper here, you can just use your skew chisel to come right down in and get most of this really nice and smooth. Again, with green wood, it'll cut so cleanly with really sharp tools that your need for much sanding is minimal. There we are. All we got to do is chisel off that nubbin and that nubbin, and there we are. Another nice project that will go hand in hand with our carver's mallet is to make what I call an assembly mallet. Um, although it's great for driving chisels, uh, it's best for putting furniture together or taking it apart in some cases. I'll use a set of dividers to find the exact center of this, and I'll now take the toe of my skew 
and just put a little tiny nick in there, not very big. And it's a good time to use the skew to just clean this up, make it nice and uniform. And now we're going to make this a little bit dome shaped on this edge, on this end, I'm sorry. We actually want to make this sort of rounded here, coming around fast, and then less crown as we progress. Now, I will generally put a little bead to the right here on this crowned end so that we can clearly know which end is crowned when we look at the hammer in a pile of junk on our bench. So I'll now just cut a very nice little bead in here, like that. This is a piece of very old, very dry maple that's got a little bit of burl in it. So it's some very hard, dense, tough wood. Ought to make a great mallet. Look good on the bench, too. Um, no need to sand this. It came out nice and smooth to start with. To drill around on perfect center, a lathe equipped with a crotch center. And this is just a, a center which has a deep V groove in the middle of it, a little platform with a V groove in it. And that'll allow me to come right here and drill this perfectly on center. So I'll start up the lathe, not going real fast. Get it steadied in the block and just turn the tailstock here. There, we did a pretty good job because uh, we've got a pretty good cylinder because we're breaking out almost on our line. If it was a perfect cylinder, we'd be perfectly on the line. This has got a little bit of taper to it. We can now just turn it around and drill the other way. A hole all the way through. By setting a set of dividers to the diameter of the head like so, we can now easily step off how long we need to make a tenon here on the end of this to go through the hole. And we'll size the tenon with a beating and parting tool here and a 15 16 wrench. Perfect. Put a little chamfer on the end like so, so it'll go in nice and easily. We'll make sure that this pretty easily slides over there. Now we'll turn the rest of the handle, which we're mostly going to do with a roughing out gouge. We're just going to bring this down to we have a very small shoulder down there around, oh, a 32nd even. We can clean this up with a skew chisel. Okay, I've cut a slot in the bandsaw down to about here. I've smeared glue on this and some down in the drill hole. And I now want to align that slot so it expands the wood along the grain. Now it takes a hammer to make a hammer. So I'll bring that right home like that. And now I will simply Insert a wedge right here, like so. Which I cut to 15 sixteenths wide and made in a bandsaw. I will not go any further. All I have to do is trim this up at the disc sander and uh, cut the wedge off and I'll have a finished mallet ready to go to work.